Hi, you're watching The Spark, stories that change our times, produced by MMP TV. My name is Allison Budshallow and I'll be your host for today's show. Many of you are tuning into this program today over cable TV or internet, but have you ever thought about the power that big telecommunications companies have over our everyday lives? When we pay huge rates for communication services, where does that money go? I'm a working mom of two, and in order to access news, healthcare, information about education, and work materials at home, my family needs cable and broadband internet. And for most of us in Philadelphia, our only choice for our communication services is Philadelphia's hometown, Comcast Corporation. Today, we'll investigate how Comcast's power in Philadelphia and their high rates for internet access hurt working people. And we'll hear from local and national leaders who will warn us what could happen if we let communications companies like Comcast get more power, get even bigger in Philly and nationwide. Let's have our guests introduce themselves. I'm Lance Haver. I'm Director of Consumer Affairs for the City of Philadelphia. My name is Dawn Hawkins. I'm a parent leader for Action United. My name is Craig Robbins. I'm the Executive Director of Action United. And I'm Brian Mercer, and I'm one of the Executive Directors for Media Mobilizing Project. Brian, let's start with you. As the Director of MMP, can you tell us a little bit about Comcast in Philadelphia and why Comcast is so important to everyday Philadelphians? Yeah, definitely, Allison. So, I mean, this issue, it's really intersected with um, every episode that we've produced of this show so far. I mean, Comcast is the largest private company here in the city, and they have a huge influence on the politics and daily life of our city. And they also have a huge influence on people's access to the internet and to cable, which is really essential for so many of the, the struggles and issues we've been talking about throughout the show. Um, people, people are divided, people are isolated in their communities and they need a way to be able to communicate so, so that they can organize and so that they can meet their basic needs. And Comcast and the high cost of their service um, and the political influence that they wield, it, it hurts the chances of our communities to come together, organize and build the type of power and city that we want to live in. Thanks, Brian. And Lance, as the Consumer Affairs Director for the City of Philadelphia, what kind of stories have you heard about how Comcast affects everyday people's lives, either because of you know, their cable access or their phone or internet service? I think there's three points. One is I get calls on a regular basis about the fact that it's an unregulated monopoly. People call disputing their bills and they want to know what they can do. And unfortunately, they have to go back to Comcast and say, hey, I think you ought to correct my bill. And it shouldn't be a shock. Comcast often disagrees and turns them off. The second is just complete confusion about what they're paying for. If anyone takes out their Comcast bill right now and looks at it, they'll have no idea what those charges are for. The fees, the franchise fees, the taxes, the this, the that. What that really means is for poor and working people that it's very hard for them to get an affordable price. Because what Comcast's billing model is, if you call them up and say, hey, I'm not going to pay that, well, then they'll offer you a better deal. But if you don't have the time, if you're taking care of your children, you're trying to put dinner on the table, you don't have the time to be on hold for an hour or an hour and a half, you can't call them up and negotiate a better price on a regular basis. And the third is service. And this shouldn't be a surprise. David L. Cohn, the executive vice president of Comcast, went before the Senate and said they knew Comcast service was awful, and they still want to take on bigger and bigger projects. Now, if you were to ask me, I would say they ought to get it right first before they try and expand it. Thanks, Lance, for the look at how Comcast is serving or not serving our communities. Um, on the subject of affordable communications access, um, in a moment, we're going to watch a piece that, Dawn, you were in. Um, and it talks about how you and your family struggled to access Comcast, um, specifically the Internet Essential Service, a program that was designed for low-income Philadelphians. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, I was introduced to um, Internet and Centrals from my son's school, which was an elementary school, and um, the agreement for Comcast was if your child received free lunch or um, in public school, they can get internet service for $9.99 and a laptop for $1.50. 
But the, it was just horrible because, you know, I was like, well, that's great because this is our everyday communication um, due to budget cuts. You know, our children need internet service to help with homework projects. You know, um, it's our everyday living. So I said, well, let's, you know, see if this is going to work. So basically, um, I tried. I mean, and um, it, it was horrible. I mean, you can't have current service. You, you, they, they doing credit backgrounds on you. Um, you, is, you can't have a bad bill. It, it's just so, it was just so many boundaries on it. If you want to put a program to support our children, which is an everyday living, is the internet service, then do it right. That's all I say as a parent. Let's dig deeper into Dawn and her son's story with this field report. My name is Dawn Hawkins, and um, I'm a parent of an eighth grader in elementary school, which is Kyrie Brown, and I live in Strawberry Mansion area. It was um, a volunteer named Ellie, and she was asking parents had they heard of a program called Internet Essentials from Comcast. So she was like, basically, um, it's here if your child receives free lunch in public school, and um, so here go the restrictions. Um, they was like, uh, we looked in your record, Ms. Hawkins. You have a bank bill for $53 from um, 1999. And I'm like, you cannot expunge a $53 record that I had for 10 years ago. They like, no, we need our money. And um, it shows that, you know, you don't really have credit. You just had bills in your name. And I'm like, well, what that got to do with, you know, getting the internet and helping my child. You know, you put this program in and it didn't support us. They just want you to get cable, so they pockets can get fed. You know, Shorey Mansion is a high crime neighborhood. Due to budget cuts, it was no librarian. Um, they cut computer classes, so our children, you know, it was the end of the school year. They had projects to do or to the pass, so it was like, chaos so the pastor down the street he you know started getting old computers and the children can go up there but pastor don't be here all week so the children you know that needed to do projects i gather them all up with permission of mothers i make them sign permission slips and we'll go walk down 27th and lehigh my child projects and work have to be done have to as i hear it comcast is charging Monthly bills is like $91 a month. That's too much. Why I have to walk my child and all the way on the other side of a neighborhood just for them to get their education? If you fund our schools, I, we wouldn't have to do that. But I have to do what I do as a mother to bring my child out of this situation. Welcome back to The Spark, stories that change our times. What did you do after you found out that your barrier to getting access to the internet was a $53 bill from over a decade ago? What did well, you guys do? I mean, what did I do? Really, I cussed them out because you don't hold me back for a bill from 10 years ago. $53, I'm serious. And my thing was, I was very pissed with that because of the simple fact you are have cable in all our neighborhoods. I'm talking about struggling parents that make sure this cable is on for their children just in case they have duties to do in the house, sit their child down to watch um, TV or cartoons, whatever scenario might be, you making billions of dollars from our neighborhoods and then you don't, you don't really put a program in it to support our children and our neighborhoods. I was pissed. I was really pissed with them. So, you know, after we um, went after them, when we did an action in front of Comcast and told Damon Coleman, truly you full of bologna with it, you know, and we passed out bologna sandwiches also. So, <laughs> so um, um, the thing with that, I'm like this with Comcast, if you want to do something to support the neighborhoods and children, quote, you making money from us, why can't you support us? You know, if it wasn't for us, you wouldn't be sitting in that high chair, being truthfully honest. So uh, I was like, um, it, it was just a flim fling and, and, and it still is. Um, we had a meeting with them. They just shook their head with us, uh-huh, uh-huh, and passed out their own brochures. They really had not too many things to say with us. Their agenda was already set. 
So, I mean, it was a waste of time meeting with them. Our, our so members came up with a list of demands of what mm -hmm. we, we knew would, could make this program work, and uh, they really didn't want to hear it. And I think even today, three years later, their enrollment numbers are, are, are abysmal. It's less than 10%. 91% I mean, of eligible families in this city still cannot access this program. I, I, I just want to mention that part of the reason why Comcast did it was so they could get their merger approved. This wasn't charity on their part. It wasn't goodwill. This was an agreement they made with our federal government, and they're not keeping it. The amount of times that they actually make the essentials program work is very small. And again, here we're looking at Comcast asking to do still another merger when they haven't really lived up to the first part of the first merger. Part of what's so sad about this situation too is this is Comcast's hometown. Their, their headquarters are here, right? And, and they, they have a few programs that are charity and are nice and, and do things for the community, but those programs aren't about changing the fundamental problem that exists of the digital divide. Why isn't this the most innovative place in really bridging the digital divide? Why does Dawn and the members of Action United and people across our communities have to go through this experience here? City Hall, because of City Hall. I mean, really City Hall should not be given wealthy people like Comcast, 10 years tax breaks, and, um, and not really supporting us back. I mean, our money comes, Comcast get rich off of Philadelphia. So I really feel as though that our city officials need to do what they have to do. And people have to stand up for what's right for our children and, and our communities. Yeah, I mean, what got us to jump into this campaign is we, we saw the David Cohen piece um, one great idea that ran in the Philly Inquirer, uh, where he talked in very moving terms about the digital divide mm -hmm. and how um, it was so critical and important, not just to Philadelphia, but to, to the, this country, that, you know, we, that everybody have access to broadband in, in this day and age. So, you know, we were kind of, you know, skeptical, but wanted to believe that maybe he was excited and was really trying to make this program work. And we quickly, our organizers started talking with people. We found Dawn, and we did a survey of 200 parents that, just to see if um, any of them were enrolled in the program, we found one parent wow. who, who actually had successfully been enrolled in the program. And the majority of other folks either hadn't heard about it or had some sort of barrier like Dawn's barrier of, of a back bill. I've been hearing in the news that Time Warner Cable is um, looking at a uh, merger potentially with Comcast. So what does that have to do with Philadelphians and uh, people like me who get our cable or internet access through Comcast? And how is it connected to the Cap Comcast campaign? Yeah, it's, it's a big question, Allison. And I, I mean, I think, uh, you know, the merger, this is, this is one of the largest mergers to happen in all of telecommunication, from, from newspapers to telephones. What, what Comcast is talking about with Time Warner Cable and taking over Time Warner Cable would mean that this one company controls the, the cable internet in 19 out of 20 of our country's largest cities. And, and that, that's massive. And I mean, I think really as we heard from Susan Crawford and her breakdown of what's happening um, across the internet industry, our country really can't afford another merger. And, and another merger for Philadelphians mean that, you know, there's, there's less we could get out of this franchise. It means that the, th there's, there's less reason for Comcast to provide more in our city like we're talking about now. So I, for Media Mobilizing Project, it's been really important to, to link what's happening in Philadelphia to this national question. And we've been working with some great partners around the country, including the Center for Media Justice and, and Free Press. Um, to, to really look at this question, figure out what to do around this merger. And we hope that people in cities, in small towns across the country, really call the question the franchises that their city have and, and call those franchises the question as a way to challenge this merger. I, I wonder, um, you know, what does it mean that so many Philadelphians that, that this access to internet has become a luxury for them and not necessarily a right that they're afforded? Craig, do you wanna take that? Well, I think when, when we talk about economic inequality and the growth, I mean, this perpetuates that problem. I mean, there's huge segments of 40% of Philadelphians that don't have access to quality broadband. And 
that, that's a problem. I mean, that exacerbates the, the inequality issues in this country. I think it's worth noting that whatever the middle class technology is, the rest of society changes to meet. Mm -hmm. So as middle class people get the internet and it becomes almost universal for middle class and wealthy people, then we start to find jobs online. So if you don't have internet access, you can't apply for work. We pay our bills online. Well, you can't pay your bills, so you have to go to a check cashing place. That costs even more. Mm -hmm. You shop online, you look for better deals. Well, if you don't have internet connection, you can't get the better deals. Comcast's story across Philadelphia goes far beyond a lack of accountable service to the working families who need it the most. Up next, an interview with Susan Crawford, noted law professor and internet expert on Comcast's history and what they want their future to be. Then we'll watch a PSA, public service announcement, from the Media Mobilizing Project and the CAP Comcast campaign. I'm Susan Crawford. I'm a professor most of the time. I spent a little bit of time in government. Cable starts as this little mom and pop business. And since then, we, in the 70s and 80s, handed out a lot of uh, exclusive franchises to cable companies. And then in the 90s, enormous consolidation. And Comcast has grown by leaps and bounds. And now, most recently, they want to merge with Time Warner Cable to be even bigger. Um, but what happened was that we deregulated the whole sector about 10 years ago when it comes to high-speed internet access. Really, for most Americans, their only choice is their local cable monopoly. There's no constraint on what can be charged for high-speed internet access. Just as in the Gilded Age, there were very few rules restraining what these moguls could do. Today, uh, Brian Roberts made $29 million last year, and his family tightly controls Comcast and is reaping enormous rewards, and their shareholders are reaping enormous rewards. But their profit incentives are not aligned necessarily with the social interest of the country. Horrifying inequality in America is just being amplified and entrenched by this brand of inequality, that their information have-nots and information haves, and the information haves are paying through the nose for it, and the information have-nots are being left out. Why can't we fight back? People are, they don't want to settle anymore for this terrible customer service and inadequate speed and price. This should just be like electricity or clean water. It's just available. It's infrastructure. It's not a luxury. We should be encouraging the building of alternative competitive fiber networks. So I'm uh, very interested in what a mayor can do to clear the way, get rid of the obstacles to competitive fiber to the home, then make that facility available to many, many competing private actors. You shouldn't elect anybody mayor in Philadelphia who isn't willing to take on this industry. You shouldn't elect city council members who aren't willing to ensure that there's an alternative to Comcast. It is not that the city is a peer with Comcast. The city should be in charge of this relationship. Why can't you uh, use the franchise agreement as an opportunity to require Comcast to install fiber? to the home. Why does it have to be for another 15 years? You know, why can't you recompete every couple of years? I'm worried that um, just tinkering with the Internet Essentials program only gives Comcast another talking point. They are not the government. They don't have the public interest in mind. Having a transport network that works well and is available to everyone at a reasonable price, having a communications network that works well and is available to everybody at a reasonable price, makes it possible for people to create flourishing lives of their own. We need a whole different direction. And now, the CAP Comcast campaign public service announcement. Well, I mean, the service is it's reliable. However, it's expensive. And for a while it was nice, but soon we started losing channels. After that short period, just the price just skyrocketed. My bills are sky high. You know, they don't answer none of your questions right. This is why I'm out here today, because I have a bill, doubled bill. They just were continually raising the price. And on top of that, their customer service is terrible. Do you know that uh, Philadelphia and Comcast are about to sign another 15-year contract? What do you think about that? I didn't know that. It's uh, pretty hard on competition. This is a story about how Comcast profits in Philadelphia while our city suffers and what we as Philadelphians can do about it. The franchise agreement between Comcast and Philadelphia, the deal that lets Comcast sell cable in our community, is about to expire. Talks are in the works for another franchise agreement that could last until 2030. Every month, we struggle to pay our bills in a hard economy. 
And for millions of us, one of those bills goes to Comcast. Headquartered here in Philadelphia, Comcast is one of the largest companies in the world. Comcast wants to get bigger than ever, with a huge plan to merge with Time Warner Cable. Yet they pay an average of less than 4% in corporate taxes to the state of Pennsylvania. Comcast took in $64 billion in revenue in 2013. They are not just using their profits to grow. They use their profits in Philadelphia and across the country to fight against affordable internet and cable, paid sick days for workers, and good public education. Our city government needs to hear from us now that the way Comcast does business in Philadelphia needs to change. We say no franchise deal unless Comcast can stop raising rates. Comcast, fund of school. Support workers' rights. Expand internet access. Support community media. Comcast, pay your share. Corporate tax rates are not helping anyone but the greedy people at the top. Now is our chance to change the story from one of corporate profit neglect to a story of how our communities mobilized and had our human rights met by our city. Let's act before another 15 years pass us by. We want to know what you think our city needs from Comcast. What's important to you, your wallet, your community, and the city that we call home? Now is the time to sign the petition at capcomcast.org and tell city officials to make Comcast pay their fair share. To find out more information about the Comcast Franchise Agreement, the proposed Time Warner merger, and what this will mean to us in hundreds of communities nationwide, visit capcomcast.org now. Welcome back to The Spark, stories that change our times. So, Craig, I want to turn to you now, and I know that Action United and MMP and a number of other organizations have been working to see how Comcast can pay their fair share and fund our schools. So, um, what could we demand, or what, what would Action United demand from Comcast in terms of this, the new franchise negotiation? Well, sure. I mean, there's, um, there's a, a big coalition in this city called PCAPS that has come, to, come together that a bunch of us are a part of. and, and a large part of that fight is finding the funding solutions for our schools. We know a lot of it's got to come from the state, but there's certainly a local share. Uh, the tax abatement scenario in, in Philadelphia is, is out of control. Um, Ten-year tax abatements for companies like Comcast. I mean, the majority of the beneficiaries of, of tax abatement are huge corporations. Um, you know, we would, I think, you know, we're still kind of formulating demands here, but I would think that uh, foregoing at least the school part of the, the tax abatement is one way to look at this, mm -hmm. uh, which would generate tens of millions of dollars just from Comcast. And I hear that our schools need tens of millions of dollars uh, at least. Hundreds of millions of dollars, yes. Um, and so, Brian, can you describe the CAP Comcast campaign that MMP is embarking on right now in more details and then what um, Philadelphians will, will be able to do with this? Sure, definitely. So I think a, a, a big part to, to understanding where this idea of Cap Comcast comes from is understanding that you know Comcast does its business because of our public goods, our streets, our lamp posts, the the lines under the street, and and that's something that all of us as people living in Philadelphia provide for and give for Comcast to do its business. Right, communities deserve public goods, public benefits from, from that thing that they're providing to these companies like Comcast. And so right now our city is in a process and in a moment where the, the agreement that Philadelphia has with Comcast is up for renegotiation. And, and there's, there's been a lot of changes over the years. One of the big changes that's happened is the internet is a bigger part of Comcast's business than cable is. Mm -hmm. and, and with that change, um, I think it really requires us to demand more from Comcast because the, that agreement in the past has only talked about the cable service, but more and more of the money is coming in from Comcast for the internet service. And so Cap Comcast is really about that opportunity to demand that we see the benefits for our communities for what Comcast is already making hands over fists. And yeah, if you see, go to com capcomcast.org, 
Um, you'll learn more about the campaign. And the most important thing is there's a chance to sign a petition. And with that petition, we're taking that to city council because throughout this year and next year, city council is going to be talking to people across the city about what should go into this agreement with Comcast. And, and this is our chance as Philadelphians to make sure that what goes into that agreement are things that support our schools, are things that support our, our public services, are things that make sure that this very channel that many of us are watching this show on continues to thrive and exist, right? So that's capcomcast.org. And, and Lance Haver, I just wanted to see um, if you can kind of bring us to a close here and give us a last word in terms of how the Consumer Affairs um, Office sees this, this franchise agreement. Well, this is a negotiation between the citizens and the consumers in Philadelphia and Comcast. And if we want lower rates, if we want better service, we have to be heard. And the best way to be heard is by signing the petition. If we have no demands, we should expect nothing. Mm -hmm. If we have demands and we keep them to ourselves, we should expect nothing. Mm -hmm. If we want our demands to be heard, we have to make sure they're carried forward. Great. I just want to add as a parent in, in um, the neighborhoods, um, I am encouraging all the parents that you know your child is in these public schools and due to budget cuts, there's no computer class. Your child have to survive off internet service each and every day. I'm encouraging all my parents all over Philadelphia before, before you make that decision, for real, for real, we should be banding Comcast, you know, being truthfully honest, but before we give them that agreement, once again, we have to make sure that they stick to their goals. One is to fund our schools, put money back in our schools. You take out our neighborhoods, you should be putting back. You're making $64 billion a year, you should be putting back. Two, um, Put a program out there to support our children. Three, lower um, price rates for cable. I mean, you, we paying 100, 100, people are paying 100, $150 a month, and you're watching the same shows over and over. I'm encouraging, once again, our communities and our parents and our community icons to get involved. I will say that this CAP Comcast program and just all of our services through the internet, like you were saying, it really stretches across all of the different shows that we've had, episodes that we've had here on The Spark. You can't access healthcare information if you don't have internet access. You can't oh. access um, information about you know, what the different labor laws and labor rights are. You can't apply for a job if you don't have the internet. So it really does cross a cut everything, exactly. education, yeah. etc. So thank you so much for being here today on our show. Um, Lance, Don, Craig, Brian, thank you guys so much for everything that you've contributed today. Thank you for having us. Thanks and God bless to all my communities and my children in them. Thank you for watching The Spark, Stories That Change Our Times, produced by MMP-TV. Remember to visit capcomcast.org to tell Comcast to pay its fair share. And for more stories about everyday people who are leading the way to winning our human rights, visit us online at thespark.tv.